Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on the keys to successful and accurate die simulation. Uh, today's event is sponsored by 3D Systems Simitron and by Autoform Engineering USA and hosted by Metalforming Magazine. Uh, my name is Brad Truven. I'm the publisher and editorial director of Metalforming, uh, and I'm pleased to serve as your moderator for today's session. Before we get started, just a few notes about today's go-to meeting session. Uh, this meeting is being recorded for archiving, and the recorded event will be posted to our website within the next few days. We'll let you know via email when the recorded webinar is available, available for viewing online and sharing with others at your company. Also, all participants in this meeting are in listen-only mode. The speaker and other listeners will not be able to hear any audio from your site during the program. However, you do have the ability to communicate with us throughout the program by submitting your questions and comments using the question box located on the right-hand control panel uh, on your GoToMeeting screen. Simply type your question to an organizer as selected from the drop-down menu. You'll use that same question panel uh, to ask questions of our speakers at the end of the presentation. So all of that said, it's time to begin today's webinar. We've got two speakers with us uh, this afternoon. First up will be David Lindemann. David is an application engineer with 3D Systems. Uh, he's an application engineer for their Simitron software. He's worked with Simitron for more than 20 years. In addition to his extensive CAD CAM knowledge, David also has 15 years of experience in plastics engineering and injection mold design, and six years in metal forming dye design. David's also been involved in the injection molding process from quotation to analyzing molding conditions and tool build as well as CNC programming. After David uh, finishes his uh, initial presentation, he'll be followed by Brian Houston. Brian is a senior application engineer at Autoform Engineering USA. He's got more than 25 years of tooling experience uh, in the West Michigan area. Uh, Brian began as an apprentice in a tool shop and has worked various jobs throughout the tooling industry. Uh, his experience ranges from progressive tooling to big class A panels and, and even hot forming processes. Now, uh, Brian specializes in customer relations and providing advanced training on Autoform software. So without further ado, please welcome David Lindemann. Thank you very much, Brett. Just a little bit here at the beginning about Symmetron. Of course, it's a part of the family of 3D system software, but it specializes particularly in tooling, mold design, die design, all the things that you would associate with a mold or die build, electrode and NC programming as well. Today we're going to focus especially on die design. We won't get too deep into anything because we have such a short time frame. In fact, you probably feel like we're just teasing you. We're going to spend some time on forming, getting together the information we need to develop the strip, and then taking that strip forward into Autoform and seeing what we can do with it there. So with that, let's jump right into our presentation with the software. Here I'm already in the midst of a project. I've got part, as you see on screen here, simple heat shield. And the thought behind this is that I want to start developing it as I see the need. So I'll start by creating a forming shape. What I'm doing is just kind of working in, I don't know, I call it like a notebook fashion. I'm just giving these things some simple names so that I know what I'm doing. And then I'm setting a progression, but that's not set in stone. It's more for me to understand the distance that I'm working with. From here, I'm going to decide if I want to work with either the punch side or the die side. In this case, my preference is going to be on the die side. The system already takes a measurement of my metal thickness and then will record that for me. So I know that I'm dealing with 14 gauge metal here at this point. That information is stored in what you might think of like a running table of knowledge or our setup file where we add more information as we go. So it's got the material thickness I need. Now it's set to, uh, set to whatever particular material we're working with. And you can see there's a pretty extensive library of materials here. You can always add more yourself as well. So I'll settle on uh, 350, and then it's going to keep track of these measurements for me as I go through it. You can also set it up if I want to create any particular die design conditions, such as establishing the clearances around my punch, or in this case, how deep do I want the punch to go down into the die steel. All these different factors and things like I set myself shoe that would be a more of a slug drop so I'll put in 
something a bit wider, then what type of die and punch condition am I creating? So pick something fairly standard here. Maybe we'll go one degree of release, and then we'll go quarter inch die life. So you get the idea that as you progress, you're adding more and more information as you go. So let's look at what we're going to do with this part here. I'm going to start unraveling it, I guess, is the best way to say it. So we'll create another die position to work with. And I'm thinking maybe the next to last thing I do would be to work along the flange here on this left-hand side. So in doing that, let me move my interface out of the way here. Okay, I'm going to use this function of automatically blanking on the binder. What we refer to as a binder is what am I binding these faces to? So I want to open that flange up to the green faces. So you see it's grabbed my material, understands the thickness. We'll go ahead and execute all these live for you because you, know, you get an idea how quickly it responds. And it's doing some pretty interesting and heavy calculation to unfold this different flange for me. So you can see the results there of what that would look like. Uh, maybe I try something completely different on the other side. Here in this case, I'm going to do a preform. So I want to work off of this radius and come down at whatever angle I'm determining. So 45 degrees is a pretty good general down the middle starting point. And it's going to build out this flange like you see here that I can develop onto. But I'm not really thrilled with the condition I see in the middle section. So that will include a patch, which is going to do some nice smoothing for me. I get a much better result. That's what I'm going to develop that flange out to. Uh, with that, let's use another function we call blank on binder. Basically, what am I binding to? Flange I just made. And then what am I going to work with? And that's going to be the flange off the part geometry. Again, everything's automatically loaded from the setup table, and we'll let that calculate on through. So it's going to take the trim and move it out onto that preform flange at 45 degrees for me, understanding the way the material would react because of the different material properties. So with that, both sides of those are starting to show development. Again, thinking about how I'd be working in a progressive environment here. Is that a new name? Yeah, I'd be thinking, what's the next thing to do? Well, maybe we'll take this full flange up. What's nice about this is you may decide to do it in portions, or if you want to try to do the whole flange all at the same time, you certainly can do that. And then you can make the choice for yourself which ones you actually want to use in the strip. So I'll develop my binder in this direction, and then let's do a quick little extension on both ends. That way I know i got enough material, top and bottom here, for that flange to land on. Right. So glue all these together, and that's going to be my binder. So again, we'll use the blank on binder function. What am I working to? Where am I starting? Let it calculate. So pretty quickly, you can size up how you're working with your part, you know, the different things you're going to run into as you uh, try to develop it. And you can make the choices, which ones you want to work with, which ones you want to keep or actually include in the strip, the final strip design. Right. With that, we're going to jump ahead and work at uh, some other functionality here. Let's look at some of the more simple stuff, do a few bends simple 90 degree bends. And uh, we'll use our unbend function here. So working with this uh, flat area, we'll unbend that flange off to the side. Now we can do that again by setting whatever particular angle we want. We can change the size of the radius or float that radius out a bit. That way when we, we do a 45 degree preform, we can come back down, hit it down straight, and crush on that radius a bit. That way we know we're taking away some of the problems of the spring back. In this case, let's just take that out flat. Do the other side. And you see both of those are now unbent based on the material. 
in the middle with the tongue, I've got a little bit more going on, so I'm going to use a function that allows me to do a more localized blank. And I'm going to tell the system that I don't want to unfold that lip not now, but I want it to put it in position where I could see what it would look like if it were formed first before we did the bending against that tongue. So it'll show me what it's like if I punched it, rolled the edge, and then form the tongue around it. So it's your choice of how you want to work in that situation. So that nicely locates it. You can see how it's changed the angle down to the flat. So a few more things we'll throw at you here that we're going to Due to time, we're going to have to run right over into some strip development. Last thing that I'd like to do is to develop the blank. This could be done right away when I first bring my part in, or in this case, after I've developed it a bit, I know I'll have a more accurate blank because I've been taking it step by step, getting closer and closer to the flat. That, you know, doing it right away is good for quotation because then I can get the overall perimeter. Yeah, I know what that that length is going round about it. Uh, that way I know my overall linear distance here, which is almost 55 and a half inches all the way around if I'm going to think about maybe laser cutting a blank. So very quickly you can see how we can develop some forms to get to where we need to go to start developing our strip. Now with that, let me hop on over to the strip itself. Here I've got a little bit more of a understandable progression. I took my time and developed out each of these stations in a little more simpler way, so I'm not trying to do too much at once. Plus, it gives me a lot of stations now that I could deal with when I'm setting up my strip. So let's hop on over into the strip. We're going to use the blank that we just created, and it's only one particular part at a time that I'm working with, or one piece of geometry is another way to think of it. So now I'm beginning the nesting. All the while we're going to keep track of our scrap area, the total amount of usage, uh, and set my min distance to something that you can see how that affects then the overall progression. If I change my overall progression, you can see how it's affecting the distance in between. So it's allowing me to play with the factors and adjust the other factors as I go. I have the option of doing a two out, and this can be with right hand, left hand, it could be with the same geometry or two different parts entirely. Plus you can shift, move these parts to interlock, you know, to nest that way as well. For what we're going to do, we're going to do a simple one out. That way we can zip right along through these uh, functions that we need to take a good look at. All right, now I'm setting up again, I'm going to keep track of my scrap, but I'm setting up how many progressions I'm thinking I want, do I want to work right hand, left hand, it's your choice, designer's preference. And then let's uh, set up the total width here. So it's looked at the absolute geometry plus a quarter inch as a default, so that's your strip width. But all these margins can be adjusted as you see fit. So if I'm doing a one out, maybe I'll put two inches at the bottom here for my carrier. And then I want to have room at the beginning. Maybe I'll throw 10 inches up front here. That, so as you can see it, so I got a little place I can, you know, drop my pilot hole in. So at any time too, we can go back and edit the spacing, edit uh, the nesting, and then everything updates accordingly. So next, we're going to look at setting up some of the uh, forms that we're going. To, uh, sorry, some of the punches that we're going to work with here. So that basically jumps me into my sketcher. And I'm going to make a real simple sketch. I don't have to do anything terribly fancy here. just want to reference a, a few points. I'm going to grab the inside edge for that one. And then I'll grab an edge up on the top. That's good. And then maybe about here in the corner. Okay. And that's so I can kind of simply dig in whereabouts I want, put some punches. Maybe I'll just split the punch hole right here, make two punches, and then come down here. You can imagine I'm, I'm making the punch, kind of just lining it up to those points. Give it a few dimensions to control it, the carrier, to make sure we got at least an inch on that. And then where this punch is going to be sticking into the material guide, it's not guide, it's 
So we're going to limit that to maybe half an inch. Okay, one more thing. Let's put a pilot hole in. Say I want my pilot to be a half inch diameter. Just kind of line that up right here. And that's what I'm going to work with then to create some punches. So quick and easy, that's the idea behind it. Start first by punching the pilot hole. First occurrence will be here, and then it'll carry on down the strip. So there you see the green face, which becomes important later, and then the holes that are created. So with that, we can start quickly just knocking in some punch holes. Maybe I'll get these uh, simple rounds first. These would be things that I probably put in with uh, a punch from a catalog. And then I've got all this wire EDM punches that I need to deal with. Let's go after some of the more uh, difficult ones or more involved ones. Put a radius on these corners. Just general practice, perhaps. So if that's, if that's what I like, go ahead and we'll build that. You know, so I just pick one indication in the center and it found the perimeter of that punch for me. Now we're going to tell it where is the first place that punch will occur, right here. So it'll punch it there and then carry it down the line for me. Let's do the other wire EDM punch. We'll pick out here. Again, put something on the corners. Now in this case, you see I've just had a line separating these two punches. And that would not really be considered very good practice at all. So we'll use something called the cookie. And that allows me to create an overlap across these punches. Uh, maybe if I drop an offset value in here, you can see, in this case, using the advanced option, we're going to notch into the steel. That way, you're not creating a shear on shear between those two punches. So that's one option. The other would be to create an extension so that I know I got an overlap across those two and then whatever radius I see that sees fit on the corners I can put those in and that can become the punch I'm working with. All right. So now where is that one going to go? Zoom back out, pick the location and there pretty quickly now we've sized up what our punches are going to look like. This allows me now to plug in the work we did earlier. Uh, let me go and add these forms right where we need to go. You can have duplicate instances of these forms. Again, you don't have to put it in any form you don't want. Maybe after you developed, you thought, oh, I don't need to do two separate unfold operations. I can get it all in one. Well, then you only need to put in one. These can be moved, replaced, whatever you see fit. But the idea is that fairly quickly, you can get together your strip, as you see here. One more nice thing to show you, and then we're going to talk about how we can get this information over to AutoForm. I want to work with this stretch feature right here, but I don't want to stretch it there. Let me... Oh, one second. Scroll down to here and work with it off of here. There, that's better. So we find that in either the form or the station, and you see how it's just duplicated across the strip. I'll mark that as my first occurrence, and then say I want three instances of it, and we'll trim into the strip as we go. So that stretch feature can be put anywhere, as you see here. Well, that's the idea behind getting our forms together, developing to a blank, and then creating the strip very quickly, not just for die design itself, but also for quotation purposes. Now, having done all that, I'm going to hop over to a different strip. The reason for this is that other part showed some of the functions so much nicer than this one would. Basically, this part has only a couple of real forms to it, but it shows very well what needs to happen in auto form. So we'll use that as we take information to auto form. From here, some of the additional things that I'll do 
to send the information autoform needs are to create basically these pads, so you know surfaces or simple solids for you know geometry purposes that I call like my lifters, and then I'm also going to create these punches, we'll call them, but really they're kind of like ideas of what you would use for forming with the metal itself. So they may not be the actual end design that you'll have, but there's something that's going to help you when you go through the simulation. All right, with that, let's hit the button, send to auto form. And now I can start adding the information I need. So by coming over here and picking a reference, it's going to know exactly what my progression is. In this case, you'll note this particular strip was drawn up in millimeters. Uh, then let's assign which parts are going to be on the lifters. So we'll come over here and pick those. At the bottom as well. And the last one's fun to pick. There we go. Okay. I've got some trimming geometry. Basically, that's going to be the punches. Oh, sorry about that. And where did it go? There we go. All right, let me go back here and show you the punches. You right click on this, which is where I made my mistake. You can auto select those punches. Remember, I said the green surfaces are going to become important, and here's how you can see why. So it's going to automatically pick all those for me. Likewise, with the pilots, say so what's going to be the first pilot to pick? I'll pick that, and then I'm going to tell it go ahead and select everything like it, and then it'll automatically pick those pilots on down. Want to pop out on me here. From there, you can now pick up forming geometry in the different stations. Uh, that will include now the uh, the forms that we made here. So I'll double click and say this and this are going to be part of the ram steel and then the pad. So I'll pick those faces and perhaps come underneath here and say, all right, do the bed steel. Make sure I pick the right one. And the bed post. Pad, I'm sorry. All right, so this information now gets propagated where we can send that on into auto form and it can begin working the simulation. So with that, I hit this button, export to auto form. And this is the perfect time that we need to give our attention to Brian as he explains what we can do in auto form. Thank you, David. Um, just a quick, I just want to do a, a quick a little who, who we are. Uh, AutoForm, uh, we develop and sell software for sheet metal forming industry. Um, we have products for um, product manufacturable, a tool and cost estimation, concept, process validation, optimization, and tryout. So basically what we do is we offer a suite of software that takes anything from your um, product development, and then we support you all the way through to, you, to your tryout needs. Um, our company is headquartered out of Switzerland, but we have sales and training offices throughout the world. Uh, our mission statement is to uh, streamline sheet metal performing with leading edge software solutions to, for customer success. Um, this is just an example. We have uh, some of our customers. Um, we're, we're in all of the major OEMs, um, 750 suppliers, tool shops, steel and aluminum component design, and we have over 3,000 users in 50 countries worldwide. All right, so now, now we will get into the AutoForm software. Um, this is the basic interface uh, you'll see. Um, from here, we just come up under the, our start application, and we import in the file that was just created in Semitron. All right, so we've imported our file. Now what we get with this is that everything that was 
you find in the template that you took out of Symmetron to, to pass the auto form comes over in this tool import page. So here's all your steels, lifters, uh, pilots, curves, cut curves, anything you need to, to run the simulation. Um, materials, this is all defined um, from Symmetron. Blank pitch is defined from Symmetron. Um, settings, you can come in here, you can say if it's upper skin, lower skin, an auto form will apply an offset based on your material offset, or you can use just the tools that contain an existing offset. Um, and then it's up to you to tell AutoForm how many um, strokes that this progressive guy is. Once that's set, uh, we, have, we have lubrication. This, we're going to use standard mill oil. Um, and here is our tool definition. Um, these will come in automatically populated based on the template that you import from Symmetron. Um, it's just kind of a good idea to maybe verify these to make sure that uh, the tools are displacing each other correctly. Um, and then pilots also, pilots come in predefined from Symmetron with a diameter and height. Um, all we have to do is tell it what the reference tool is and we're good to go. Um, once that part of it is done, uh, we are able to, are ready to look at our um, simulation. We have a couple different engineering phases. We have a concept evaluation page, which is for uh, your initial feasibility uh, process, run it through, make sure you have all your issues corrected. And then we have a final validation state, which goes through and, and runs a different uh, mesh setting to, to validate your results. So once we have this done, we can come on down here under our start and we do what we call a kinematic check. Um, all that's gonna do is just basically take a one hit or not a one hit, we're just running in the background, checking all the kinematics, making sure we don't have any issues. And once that's generated, we'll jump right into our, we'll go ahead and run our simulation. Um, I have already uh, run this one just on the, of time, I didn't want to have to run the simulation. Um, but we can step through here. You'll see that the sheet moves, but the tools stay in position and just go up and down. So as we come through here, uh, we'll run it all the way through our process. Just click through these, and uh, we can see our sheet moving. All right, so we've come down through, we've, we're through our, our finished form station. Um, now we just kind of want to look at our, our part and our evaluation. Um, so we're going to just do a couple little things. Um, for one, I notice here that this flange um, should be a 90 degree bend, and I see that it's kind of cocked on an angle. So something is to me a little bit wrong here. So let's go back to our first form station is right here where we're bending this tab down. And let me cut a section through there. Let me get this panel out of the way so I can see it. Right through here. And I'll turn our tools on. So we'll run this down. We'll take a quick look and uh, see what's going on here. So as we start to bend this tab, I see that um, I have a tool penetration issue. Um, and I can also tell that this is because this flange here uh, was developed in a negative condition. So that's one thing that we need to look at. Um, the other thing is uh, get out of our section here. And I noticed that we are, in our process, we're forming this part here complete all the way down. So let me make this transparent so we can see it. And as we form this, as I form this down, we can see that uh, maybe there, this, this front edge of this flange is getting pretty wavy. And any of us know that any of these waves are going to end up being 
wrinkles. So we can kind of look at this. We can see that we've got some possible wrinkling issues going on. So we'll run this down to bottom. So we're sitting on bottom here. Um, but Autoform, we do offer some evaluation tools. So if I click on our, our wrinkle analysis, um, I can see here in the front of our part that we have this red area right here, which indicates that that is a, a wrinkle zone, a wrinkle area. So as I I've, I've, I've went through and I've looked at this part, I said I got a, I see an issue with my flange and I, I'm gonna have an issue with wrinkling right here. So what do I do? Well, from here, we, we've ran through our simulation. So now we're back and analyzing our part. So from here, I would take this back to Semitron or, and then I would reevaluate my process, maybe open up that, that flange, make sure that that's a true 90, and then maybe change my, my forming process here where I can maybe put a pad or something around the front of this part to control the metal to eliminate the wrinkling. So what we've done is we've went back to Semitron and we've made our changes. Now we've brought that back into Autoform. Now we're going to rerun our, our process. We'll just kind of step through this. We'll skip the blinking operations. We, those were good. We didn't need to really go through those. Um, so here is our, our first form now. We are going to draw this part back up. Coming into it, we're going to draw this part now and I'll make this transparent so we can see. See this here? As I step this part down, let me open. So let's go back to the bottom of our stroke. That's where we want to look for our defects. So here's our bottom, and then I'll come back and I'll click on my wrinkling. Okay, now same same evaluation scheme, or how you, that we did before, but this part now is blue, which indicates that our wrinkling issue has been resolved due to our fact that now we are now holding this front of this part with a pad and controlling the controlling material. Um, one other thing we did is that instead of bending this tab first, now we are bending this tab after we hit this first form. So let's come into that forming operation. And I'll step this through. All right, so now we're bending that tab, but like we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a section through here. Make sure we get to the center of that tab and I'll turn our tools on. So now what we see is that we come right as we form this, now we are forming it at the 90 degree angle. So when our tool opens, it uh, looks much better. We don't have that, that big spring back or that big distortion of the flange because we're not displacing that metal with a tool violation. All right, so we've, uh, we've went through, we fixed our, our form on the end with our wrinkling. We've, we've fixed our flange. Now let's walk the rest of the way through our process here. Turn our tools off, look at our sheet. So what are we doing? This is our, uh, our second form. I'll make this one transparent. So we can see the forming of this. You'll also notice that when we, we form these that you'll notice we, we cover the downstroke and we also cover the, the tool opening. Um, so you will be able to see if you have any um, conditions where you may run into a uh, reverse forming condition uh, due to pad timing, um, et cetera. As we come through here, now we're into our cutoff station. All right, so our tools been, or our parts been cut off. Now we're left with just our just our final part. 
Um, we, we had it tied together in a strip, but we're now we're just looking at one side. All right, so now we've done, we've got through our forming issues. We've ran it through, we revalidate our process. Um, another thing that we can analyze while we're with, still with on the auto form is we can look at forces. Just give it a second here. Um, the way the way with this works is because we have all of our tools in one station. You will see all of the all of the the numbers. These will be zero except for the operation or the tool that's being used in that operation. So if we go to operational view, and I say I come to my my seven my S seven station, it's only going to give me tonnages or um, forces that are relevant to that station. Um, I can do it in an operational view this way, or I can uh, click on a specific uh, specific pad, and you can look at the forces required just to this one pad. Um, now, the way the simulation was run, we ran with what we call force control, which auto, which allows AutoForm to automatically calculate the tonnage required um, to keep your pads closed, and then it'll it'll report it here in this. Um, Operation that you're right here. Okay, so now we've we've looked at our forming process. We've we've fixed our issues. We're um, we ran through our whole process. We're happy. We went through our forces. We can now record these forces and then take them back to our CAD software and then apply these tonnages to our individual stations. Um, one other nice thing that we do in AutoForm is that we have, um, let me go back here to our end process, our end part. So, so here's our end of our simulation. Um, we can validate the, the trim lines, where our trim lines are, um, our whole developments. For some reason, if something changed and um, we want to double check that, that our, we send this back to Symmetron that our blank um, curves and holes are all going to be in the right position. We can do that with inside of AutoForm. So what we do is we have an, um, another step we can go through after you have your initial green simulation. We come back here and we have what we call trim optimization. Um, we set a number of iterations, so how many times AutoForm is going to run the simulation. Uh, a deviation, how close we want to be to our target profiles. And then we define our boundary curves, um, what is the target and what, what's the auto form going to, to solve to. So that, then we go ahead and run this and then auto form will run. Even if you said five iterations, if it finds the best iteration in one, it'll stop. So that's what we see here. Um, this is a trim up file that's already been run. And then if we look at our curves now, our trim curves, We can see the blue line is our trim optimization. So you, if you look at this in a straight view, because you're piercing this and this is the profile, so that's, that looks good. This hole here is a your blue line, you'll see won't match identical because this curve is, um, because it's auto form is only showing you mid sheet, but the curve, if you look at the curve this, in the direction that it needs to be straight on, then that curve will line up. So we have a good, good profile, we have a good trim, we have good holes. Um, from here, you have a couple of things you can do. Um, you can go through, what I would recommend is running your simulation. Um, when we run the first time, we were running everything at this PE level. Um, from here, I would go ahead and run everything at a final validation level. Um, we change the meshing, um, it, it, the simulation will be a little bit slower but you have a more accurate result for your formability. And then once you have your, um, your final validation simulation run, now we can do another thing um, because you always wanna know if you have spring back in your part. Um, we have an analysis that we can do. It's very, very simple. Um, we can do it either from over here or we can get it here on the evaluation. Um, and what this is, is this is a, a material displacement so what you're seeing so right here we're indicating 
that if you had a tolerance of say 0.5 and a minus 0.5 on your spring bag, that part would look pretty good within your tolerance. Now maybe you would want to come down here, you're at a 0.35 and maybe this is a little on your comfort zone. Maybe you want to go back in and change this area. Same thing with this tab. Maybe you want to get this tab a little better. Um, that's all stuff that's easily done inside of our night. It's what we get out of AutoForm is you'll get a, like a vector field. And then from that vector field, you'll be able to take it back to Semitron and uh, apply your compensation or, or make your moves to, to finish your surfaces. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the, for the AutoForm side. Now, once you have this done, um, all you have to do to get it back to Semitron is we come up here and we just say share via quick link. What that does is it pops up a, a dial or a, a window and you just name this file, you save it where you want to. And then from that point on, it's, it's you can take it right back into Semitron. Okay, thank you very much, Brian. So that takes us back to where we left Symmetron before, as you see the strip is still up. And we can now receive that information that Brian just made, basically. So that comes across as the zip file. We'll now load that information quite a bit here because we went through all the different stations. This includes information for the trim line optimization as well as the spring back calculations. So my choice if I want to bring all the results in or do I want to specifically look at just uh, one you know, station in particular, say right here, uh, we can now include the results of the spring back. We'll create a displacement.csv file. So basically that's the point cloud that we can overlay on top of the form or the part, in this case, that part of the strip. And then using that, we'll do a spring back deformation where we can adjust the part or the tool steel to compensate for the spring back. Go ahead and create that. Also, we'll bring in the trim line optimization and we'll let that think about it for a second as it brings that information into the Symmetron environment. A lot of useful things it does for you. First time I saw this, I was very, very impressed. Very, very impressed. Zooming up, there you can see the old curve in green with the new trim line optimization, showing the adjustments that may need to be made. It may affect how I go about punching it. Maybe I make some changes in punch order, or in this case, maybe split that punch into separate punches. And then it also will show me, a little bit tricky to see, but it's brought in, here's my results, so let me turn off the punches here. Now you can see the spring back deformation as I brought that around, uh, uh, brought that in as a mesh. So again, from here we go into the calculation, deform the part, and then we'll have the information from AutoForm incorporated into our design. And I believe that is about it. So at this point, yeah, we're running out of time. So at this point. I believe we'd like to give our attention back to Brad, our moderator, as he continues our presentation. Great. Thanks, David. And, and thank you, Brian, as well, for excellent presentations. It's pretty neat how the two softwares work together. Um, so go ahead and use your question panel on the right-hand side of your screen if anybody's got questions for these guys. We've got about oh, 10 or 15 minutes, so plenty of time for questions. Excuse me. So. The first question we have is um, developing draw beads, um, and I think it's specific to Class A body panels and, and other types of shallow draws. Can you talk about how you'd use these two software products to, to do draw bead development? You want to go first, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> with with uh, basically the way that our, our um, frog sim works, uh, you would have to put the beads into Semitron and then bring them into AutoForm as a, say, a physical bead. And then as you ran the simulation, you'd be able to see um, if your 
restraining force was too high or too low. And then you'd have to make the adjustment back and forth um, a few times. But you would be able to see uh, basically if you were getting enough stretch or pulling the wrinkles or if you were getting too much holding condition where you're ripping your panel. Right. So, yeah, definitely we'd surface that up as part of our progression. And then the surface is the information that Autoform needs to work with. So based on the results, you may have to change your drop heat or alter it to suit. So, But together, those two softwares work nicely to functionally make a good drop heat. Okay. okay. How, how, do the, how do the two products work uh, for spring break analysis, um, design, and then simulation, and the back and forth? Well, we kind of... We briefly were able to show it. You can see that uh, Brian was able to take the results from the design process, that calculation for Springback, and then the Springback information is returned to Symmetron, where we can compare the results in auto form to what the design was or where the part sits, basically. Um, we didn't get to show it, but from there, we can compensate on the model. So we know it's going to spring out. It's like we're pushing the part in to compensate by a certain percentage of how much that spring back would be calculated. Then, obviously, after the spring back effect takes place, the part would be much more closer to what we intended it to be. So, you know, the idea is you'd rather do that in the software and test it out than to cut steel, find out, oh, yeah, the spring back's pretty bad, and i got to go back and recut it and then do it again and again, get rid of some of those tryouts, but, you know, calculate it in the software and use that. Um, can you give reliefs at the wrinkles in auto form to, to uh, optimize the blank, to get a better blank? Can you give relief to the wrinkles? Yes. Um, that is a question. Okay. Um, no, I mean, auto form is going to calculate the wrinkle. Um, there's no way to, to, to relieve the, not the, in the product MC, there's, we don't, have any way of really relieving stress is I guess is that's the question. Um, you're gonna the wrinkle is gonna iron out on the bottom. Autoform is gonna show you that it, it that there's not wrinkles in your panel. That's why we have to use the uh, evaluation tool. So that's not really I don't feel is gonna affect your your blank uh, streamlining development too much. Okay. Okay. In draws, uh, how is loose metal displayed in auto form? Loose metal is going to be shown um, as a wrinkle or a, or a wave in the material as you form it. You're going to be able to visually see see those things as you as you step down your your simulation. Um, usually, you would run your simulation through and then go back in and look at your maybe your form sections and analyze visually first to see if you can see any of those conditions. Okay. And then we have analysis tools that will you can use for wrinkling, um, splitting, those kinds of things. Okay. Uh, David, is, is Symmetron only for strip development, or is it used um, also for complete uh, prog die design? Um, yeah, you can do your entire design. Put a die set that you can customize around it. Um, you can bring in analog components, either components or assemblies of your own creation or the ones that come provided even with the software, but it's all entirely customizable to print the unique way that you may be doing your dies, and you can do an entire complete die design with it. Okay. Can you support die components, the, the, you know, the more well-known die component suppliers, the Danleys and Dactos of the world? Yeah, yeah. We have uh, very extensive catalog listings of different uh, components that are available, and we're always adding to that, too. So our customers drive the need, so we get requests for it, then we can model that up and put it in the catalog. Um, customers themselves can make their own catalogs, too, if they just want that information to themselves. Okay. All right, and then I know, Brian, you, you kind of had a, a pre, pre-done pre simulation, if you will. How long does the simulation usually, usually take to run? I know it's going to vary based on the part and complexity and stuff, but typical simulation time. Brian, hello. 
Did we lose Brian? Maybe. David, you're still there, right? I'm I'm still here. <laughs> okay. So do you know how long the simulations typically take? Uh that I'm not sure of. I um and I hazard to guess if they'd be wrong. Um, yeah, okay. Depending on computing it's, power. It's a mess, okay. though. Yeah. And it depends okay. on your computer too, you know. Yep, absolutely. Maybe that's um, how we can take note of who asked that we can get an answer from Brian afterward. Yeah, okay. We can do that. Um yeah, and then there's another question here about um using Creo software, uh which you know, I don't I don't know if he's Autoform is as compatible with Creo as they are with with uh with the Simitron. But uh, that's another question no. we can get to Brian. Um, all right, that's all the questions we have logged in right now. Anybody else have any questions before we let David go?